guys, and welcome to Summer Lunch Break. Today's guest can't really be identified by one label because he's got a few. He is the Picasso of the wave world, a writer with major C's, and at the startup of his music career. He is known as the most interesting man in wake. He is Wesley Mark Jacobson. Today's episode is going to keep you guys laughing because Wes fills us in all things Velvasta Wake Compound, Space Mob Crew, and alien abductions. So stay tuned, keep on watching, because here he is, Wesley Mark Jacobson. You know what I'm really scared about is if the wakeboarders get too close to shore, they may use some people on the shore as, as bonking items. Thank you. No Thank you. Problem. Stoked to be here. We are so happy to have you. Uh, so yeah. I'm just going to go down the list. I got a couple hot topics I want to ask you about, and then we're going to roll with it. Easy. Let's do biggest, it. Biggest question of the day is what you have for lunch. Um, well, my lunch was a couple hours ago, and I made some pasta with red sauce and some garlic, onions, and peppers. Hell yeah, pretty, okay. Pretty stand. I'm trying to eat a little bit healthier, but my girlfriend just went back to Germany, and so it's a little bit bigger of a challenge to eat healthy when you're just by yourself, you know? I mean, she, Cause, yes. Because she's always eating healthy, so when she's around, it's a lot easier, but when it's just me, this is, this is, <laughs> my, this is my midday lunch right oh, now. Oh, shit. Well, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, it's hard, you know, we are out here at beautiful Valdosta Wake Compound, and the weather has been amazing the last couple of days. So we've been riding a bunch and winching, actually, trying to finish up the filming for our The Coalition, the movie, The Trilogy, which we'll be dropping uh, probably sometime later this year. But but we've been, we've been going. We've been going Franken. hard for it. Heck yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, my God. Oh my Where'd God! Where'd you go? Uh, oh my God! It's an Amber Alert. Oh no! Uh oh. oh, oh okay, no. you're back. Sweet. Damn. Sorry. Okay. Amber no, you're Amber. good. <laughs> <laughs> Hope everyone Crazy. is okay. Yeah. Oh. Right. Apparently, they might not be. But. <laughs> okay. So What's up? I have all these questions, I want to get to the coalition video for sure. We definitely want to start out with kind of your story and the early days of your wakeboarding, how you got into it, all those things. So just, you know, tell us all about that. Okay. Um, so I actually, I've always like grown up like riding and not, not wakeboarding yet, but snowboarding and skateboarding and actually rollerblading a bunch and kind of always been on the move and always wanted to shred and stuff but I've always I've really been interested in wakeboarding for a while but I never really had access to a lake or a boat or a cable park or anything like that so um, I actually when I went to college I went to College of Charleston and part of my decision to go there was because I heard that they had a wakeboarding team and so and Charleston's obviously it's a great school and it's a beautiful city and everything, but they had this wakeboard team and I got wind of that. And I was like, hell yeah, I want to wakeboard. So I went to college and I actually didn't find the water sports club until year two um, of my college career, but it was at uh, a local spot called trophy lakes. It's like a water ski lake, but they had, they had a wakeboard park. It wasn't a cable park at the time. We were just hitting rails that we built on the side of their lake behind an old ski boat. And okay. so that's kind of what that consisted of. And then, damn, kind of long story short, like me and my buddies kind of all got into this club. And then over the years, uh, me and my friend Chris Trabold actually took over the club and started running it. And 
And by the time that we graduated, when, I, when we joined the club, it was like 15 members. And by the time we graduated and passed it on, it was like at like over 150 members. And we were taking trips down to all the Florida cable parks and stuff. And then, and then actually right about that time, Trophy Lakes got um, three System 2s. And then we built our own cable park. And, and that's really when kind of, I got really serious into it because we had our own park, we could build our own features and, and we were filming and riding and partying and, and just like the vibe was alive, you know? And then, and then I graduated college and kind of just stuck around Trophy Lakes for a couple years, just riding and filming. And it was at that time when I kind of, kind of got noticed by slingshot and started getting hooked up with boards and and then after that happened it was like this is what I'm gonna do like oh yeah because I had my degree in my back pocket and I was like there's no way I'm gonna go get a normal job right now and it's like I, I'm trying to chase my dream you know and crazy it kind of all worked out you know and then yeah. like and then stuck around Trophy Lakes for a couple years and just hanging out, riding, playing disc golf, and just really just vibing. And then I went to Jibtopia for like right when the debut came out and all those clips dropped of the bus and everything up there. I was like, damn, this park looks sick. <laughs> so I packed up all my stuff and headed to Jibtopia and actually lived there for about two years or two summers and just riding with those boys and filming and like I've always been big on filming and like making edits and stuff because I mean that's what I grew up watching you know snowboard edits and skate edits and stuff like that so I just wanted to make edits and uh, apparently it was a good idea (laughs) because that's like how you kind of get noticed from brands and stuff. So, and yeah, everything just kind of just kept rolling, just kept kind of cruising around to different parks and trying to film as much as possible. And, and then, and then I started traveling internationally and I went to CWC wakeboard park. Um, that was in 2014, maybe. Okay. Filmed a video out there with Quinn Silvernail and Oliver Bremlin. And at that time, Valdosta Weight Compound was in the works. It was like being dug and built and everything. And I was on this trip with Quinn. And he was like, yeah, dude, I'm about to build the sickest wakeboard park in the world. And I was like, sick. I want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> So then kind of after that trip, I moseyed, I think I stayed a couple weeks in Charleston and then I moseyed up here for a weekend just on vacation. And then I really just never left. Oh yeah. And then, and then fast forward five years, I'm sitting here on my front porch talking to you. (laughs) Well, sweet. (laughs) I'm glad I made it into the story. (laughs) Yeah. And you're here. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah, uh, it's crazy thinking back about all that time and everything, but I mean, it's nothing but good memories with good homies around and stuff, so just trying to keep it going, you know? For sure. I want to know more about, um, like, taking a step back from everything you just told us. Basically, you know, when was the last time you rode behind a boat? Probably at my parents' lake house, like a long time ago (laughs) well I did I did do that edit with Dylan Miller and I went down um to film him behind the boat I wasn't doing tricks or anything but I did do a lot of riding behind the boat because I was filming him um but yeah I don't know boat riding's just not my steez like there's like there's not like I don't know I just don't vibe it like (laughs) What is it, what would you say, like, about cable riding? Like, what about that draws you to it way more than, like, boat does? Like, why is that your thing? I think for me, it's, like, 
the creative aspect and it's park riding and park riding is always what I've been attracted to. Like even in snowboarding and skateboarding, it's like, I'm not, I'm not watching half pipe in skateboarding or snowboarding. I'm watching park footy, you know, and street parts and stuff. And that's just tricks, you know, like, and like for me, like riding behind the boat is more so like jumping on a trampoline, you know, and I'm trying to, I don't know. It's just not my sauce. Like, I got you. like, hit, I got you. like hitting rails and building rails and, trying to figure out different ways to hit those rails and make tricks look different and unique. Like that's just my vibe. Like, I feel like my, my creativity definitely comes out in the park and I've always just loved that. And I really just have no desire to ride behind the boat. There. It's Hell yeah. Like, you know, I like, I, it like sounds <laughs> bad, you know, like I'm not, nah, you're fine. <laughs> I, I'm not bashing boat riders by any mean, but it's just not my steez. Totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, you got to yeah. do what you think, right? What makes you happy? Yeah, exactly, you know. Totally. Yeah. I want to also ask you about, because you mentioned Velasa Wake compound. You know, I want yeah. you to kind of tell us about how that, how you started there, how it's kind of come to be what it is now, what sets it apart from other cable parks, just all that jazz I want to know. Uh, well. It is the best cable park in the world because I can kind of say that now because I have traveled a lot of the world and been to a lot of the other hype parks and it's the best like oh, if I can if I can turn can I turn my camera around yeah I can I'll show you why it's the best park oh hell yeah I'm loving this <laughs> Because it's like kind of hard to see there, but the cable is spinning and there's, there's, there's like maybe one or two people out there and it's just butter. Like yeah. it is the flattest water at a cable park in the world. Like they have their island, it's just a huge uh, like land island in the middle and no wakes like come back or get sent around the cable. And it's, it's a good climate as well. Like we pretty much have like, I mean, 12 months riding, but really probably like 11 months. February can be kind of brutal at times, but it's just, and you can also like, it, it really, it really inspires creativity and, and really gives you a platform to express it with the 2.0 and the full size and everyone that works here if you have an idea that you want to do you can do it it doesn't matter if it's sketchy or dangerous or whatever it might be we're down you know and um, there's always homies to help you build and help you film and to hype you up and it's like you don't really get that a lot a lot at a lot of other cable parks you know mm -hmm. they're more like corporate and professional and this is like this is a park that's built by the homies for the homies. You know? Hell yeah, for so sure. It's like, it's just such a good, it's just such a good vibe. And like, and it's a very challenging park and it's dangerous and it's, <laughs> but, but that's like the sickest, you know, like for look sure. at this, look at the skaters and snowboarders making street parts and that shit's very dangerous you know <laughs> yeah. but that's what makes it cool you know is you're taking risks and and trying to put down the best trick you can so and yeah i mean all my friends live here so it's kind of just like this is the spot it's your own little uh, slice of paradise it is and it's like it's just so good you know and it's got a big property and and we still, we live here all the time. We can light up the skate park at night and skate or build a fire and hang out. Or we got some disc golf baskets set up, can throw some discs. And I just... heard that that's, you really like disc golf, yeah? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, when did like, you, that, like that's like an understatement too. I <laughs> love disc golf. I'm an oh, avid no disc golfer. For I can't sure. even throw a frisbee. Like I chuck it, and it does that stupid little like way too high off to the side. Like I can't throw it straight. 
<laughs> yeah, it take it takes some time for sure. But uh, yeah, actually, I got into disc golf when I lived at Trophy Lakes in Charleston, South Carolina, where the cable park was, and because there was like a pretty sick eighteen hole disc golf course that went around the cable park there. Oh, cool. So it was like whenever we weren't, uh, whenever we weren't wakeboarding and just chilling or something, we'd go for a round of disc golf, and then, and then I just picked it up and kind of became pretty good at it. So I was like, "Sick! This is this is something I want to do." And it's, yeah. and it's actually a great sport to kind of keep with you because it's free at like ninety percent of courses. It's free. So whenever I'm traveling and stuff, I bring my disc golf bag. And if you're on a long road trip, it's such a great thing to like make a stop, walk around the woods for an hour and a half, and then get back in the car and keep cruising. Hell yeah. That's sweet. That's a cool fact. I feel like not a lot of people are, I don't know anyone that plays disc golf. So that's sick. It's, <laughs> it's rad. It is sick, dude. Once you, once you like invest with like your bag and your disc, then it's just free. And it's like so. <laughs> It's so relaxing too because you can bring I can bring my dog and just rock up and you're pretty much just walking through the woods for an hour and a half throwing pieces of plastic. So it's like, Hell what's yeah. wrong with that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You mentioned uh, before we start talking about di disc golf. You mentioned like how the park allows you to kind of be creative and you know reach that side of yourself, and I have heard that you have been named the most interesting man in wakeboarding <laughs> because apparently you don't fit into or you check off a lot of boxes you know you got your writing you have your style your artwork your music I want to talk about all those things um, <laughs> but I want to start with your dope style and where that comes from uh tell me more about that so yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, I think my style comes a lot from trying to be unique and like not trying to do all the stuff that I see. I'm like, I really try to do stuff that I haven't seen, you know, and like trying to incorporate like all the butters and stuff. And that's all, I mean, it's all fun for sure. But it's like, I, I really like to try to take simple tricks that everyone does, but then try to put some sort of sauce on it to where it's, it makes it different in, in some way, you know, and it can be, it can be hard at times because like a lot of, a lot of people have picked up on the style and a lot of kids are kind of jocking it, which is <laughs> sick it's sick but then it kind of it takes me back to the drawing board and I'm like damn like now I got to figure out something new you know they're but keeping you on your toes keep me on my toes for <laughs> sure but it, but it makes it fun too you know is try to try to keep it going and, and keep progressing and and but it's also I feel like that style can come in with like thinking of new rails to hit like when I scored my first cover here with the with the red bollards, I actually saw that in snowboarding. And then I was like, damn, like no one's done that on a wakeboard, I'm sure. Like, <laughs> I think Raph Derome hit a chain a while ago and that was sick, but it's, it's similar, but different, you know? And that's what I mean about this place supporting creativity is because I had this idea. I was like, I want to build this bollard rail no one's done it and I had in my head right off the bat I was like I'm gonna build this rail and I'm gonna get a cover for it and okay. and so then I got the materials built it I like hit up Bradley Rutledge I was like yo I got this rail that I want to build it's never been done in wakeboarding I want to cover <laughs> yeah yeah and then and then it actually pulled through that I like sent him pictures of the rail after I built it and he came up here to shoot and I like actually went to Home Depot and got a bunch of flowers to put in between the poles Aww. tried to make it <laughs> as, as like aesthetically pleasing as yeah. possible and then it all worked out you know um but yeah the 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 style just comes from wanting to for me it's like I want tricks to feel as good as possible yeah. you know sure. and when 
And when you really get it right, you feel it, you know? It's like most of the time it's like I don't even have to check the tape or anything. It's like I know like, that, that was, was the it. one. Yeah. That was it because I <laughs> felt it. I heard it, you know? Like I, I heard the slap. I felt the sauce. I was like, that's it. We did it. Hell yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Sick. What about uh, – what about style for like the graphic that you've done for your boards and stuff? Those, I mean, where does that stem from? Uh, well, I've been, I've been doing art pretty much my entire life. Like ever since I was a kid, I've always been drawing. I've always been in art classes in high school. I was in AP art in college. I took studio art the whole time. I actually have a minor in studio art in I've I've always just been creating it's always been my thing like even when I was a kid I was I was drawing or I was in my dad's garage cutting up pieces of wood and painting them or or taking my snowboard and painting it or actually like I like took I like wanted a cow print board at one time and I like I like bought went to the store with my mom bought fabric cut it out put it on my board epoxied the stuff on it and then I was like sick now I got a cow print <laughs> snowboard <laughs> and when, actually when I rode it at the mountain like it all peeled off in one day okay. <laughs> but like whatever you know I had that cow print snowboard but yeah I don't know like the the art art's just always been with me and I think when I was really like trying to get a contract from Slingshot, um, Jeff was like, yeah, I don't really have much budget for your contract this year, but I actually do have um, some graphics that need to be done. So maybe we can try you out with that. And that's kind of how that came to be. And then did my first couple graphics and I guess the response is pretty good and mm -hmm. just been keeping it rolling ever since, you know? yeah they're badass like you're you're really talented they're super cool thank you and it's no problem. It's, it's such a blessing to to be able to put my artwork on these boards that are mm -hmm. shipped all around the world and stuff and I'm forever grateful for that because it's like it's the best outlet for my art that I could ever imagine like it's always my dream as a kid was to wanting to do skateboard graphics or snowboard graphics because that was what I was into at the time but now to be able to do wakeboard graphics and to share my art with the world is, is really a blessing. So I'm, I'm forever hyped on that. Even if I yeah. never do another graphic, I'm <laughs> so hyped on what I've done. And, but I have no plans on stopping. We're going to keep it going for We're sure. Gonna keep, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling, baby. Speaking of sharing your art, your music yeah what's up <laughs> tell me about it what how do you you know when did that start and and just how what influence is that is it the same as kind of the writing and the the feeling it and you know that's the one or what yeah I mean music music's a little bit more of a challenge for me because it's all it's all new um but it's it's really just stemmed from you know, like I was saying, me being a creator, you know, I've always been creative and wanting to make things. And actually, I'm a big like, I'm a big music nerd. Like I listen to all kinds of music for sure. But I'm definitely a big rap head. Like I've always mm -hmm. loved rap music, like always a huge Lil Wayne fan. And like, that was like a lot of my childhood I was chilling my homies listening to new mixtapes <laughs> and stuff. And and so, like, I've always, like, I've always had this thing in my head that, like, I've kind of wanted to make music but didn't really know how or or who to hit up or anything like that. And then um, it was actually during a uh, off-season I took after my brother had kids. And so I took, like, a couple months off from Valdosta and just went home to live with my brother to spend time with the kids and just get some, some family time, you know, which yeah. is, which is kind of tough with this lifestyle sometimes, you know, you get, you get immersed in it and traveling and stuff. And then it'll be like, holy shit, it's been eight months since I've seen my family. Yeah. So it's like, so I just went home and it was kind of cold there and just spending a lot of time indoors and I was pretty much just bored. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't riding or skating much. And I was like, I need to do something. 
So I was like, fuck it. I think I'm going to try to make my first, my first song. And, and actually my, um, one of my friends that lived in my neighborhood as a kid, he was this, this little black kid and he raps. And so I contacted him and he hooked me up with his studio guy in Spartanburg where my brother lives And I wrote that first song, Bangs, and found a beat for it and just kind of went went to the studio with not really knowing anything about it and was like, I'm going to try to put this down, you know? And damn, I was so nervous. (laughs) In in that, like, in being in the booth for the first time and, like, it was crazy. But such a a fun experience because it was so... It was so new for me, you know, and like, because it's like all all this stuff, making videos and shooting and wakeboarding. It's like I've been doing it for a while now. Mm -hmm. So it's really doesn't I mean, it still brings the hype when you still get a clip and are winching or something like that's the hype. But it's like it's kind of normal now, you know? Yeah. So it was it was so exciting to kind of try to do something creative. Um that was all new and fresh sure. and like to really get my heart going and and yeah after you know after the first the first couple tracks I made like it was it was a pretty good response and I was definitely hyped on it and then kind of got like back in after the off season got back into wakeboarding and, and kind of put it down for a while but then I was like I don't know but then I just have that thought and I'm like damn I need to make music again you know because yeah. like Cause I feel like it, it, it's a cool community to, to be a part of, like, even if you make shitty music, you're still making music, which is kind of tight. So it's like, yeah, it was really like, had this thing, like, I don't have to be the greatest or this or that. Like I can just do it for fun. And mm-hmm. if something comes of it tight, if not also tight, and I'll probably still make music just cause it's another creative outlet, you know, mm-hmm. and that's kind of, that's who I am. I, I'm a creative person and I never want to stop creating things. So yeah. that's, that's, just, I'm going to definitely keep it with me and keep practicing and try to keep getting better and keep it hype and keep it fun. And now I actually have um, the old, one of their old campers beside mine I actually set up a studio in it so now I can record kind of on my own and I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out the producing side of it all which is a very big challenge (laughs) um but it's also fun you know because it's something new to try to figure out and to learn and yeah so I've been having a lot of fun with that and definitely going to keep it going yeah, that's a kick-ass mentality to have about it, too. Like, it's not about being the best. It's just about doing something new, enjoying it, you know, yeah. trying something different that you're maybe not comfortable with, but you'll get to that point eventually. Yeah, and, like, and, and like my music taste, like, I like a lot of, like, really, like, crunchy, kind of, like, shitty music sometimes, you know, and it's, like, I'm sure a lot of people don't like this song, but I think <laughs> I think it's hype, you know. So like, I feel like even if even if you're creating music, you don't have to please everyone, but like, you're probably gonna get someone hyped out. Totally. There, you know. Yeah. And it, and it was actually like after my first song bangs. Um, it was like probably a year later, but I had some guy like hit me up from California. And he was like, damn, it took me so long to find you. But I just want to let you know that, like, I love your music. And, like, he's in, like, a a mountain bike crew or something. And he's like, the whole squad loves your music. And we ride to your music all the time. And I was like, boom. Like, that's it. You know, that's (laughs) it. That's, like, that's all I need. You know, I got one. I got a a group of mountain bikers in California (laughs) that are like hyped on my music and like bumping bangs while I ride. I was like, that's what's up. Like, that's all I need. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. (laughs) I thought it was the, I I thought it was the sickest thing ever. I was like, these dudes are hyped on my tracks. Don't even know me at all. Like, 
that's hype you know so Hell yeah <laughs> gotta keep it going <laughs> well you know who you remind me of like I, when i first heard banks i literally was like yo this sounds like young gravy yeah it yo, sounds young- just like him like seriously like it's weird. <laughs> young Gravy's sick, dude. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Young Gravy. You know, it's funny. For, like, two years, I had no idea Young Gravy was white either. He, sound, <laughs> he sounds like a big-ass black dude. Like, I don't know, dude. Gravy. Uh, <laughs> like, it's gravy time. It's gra- <laughs> dude, Gravy's <laughs> sick. Shout out Young Gravy. Shout out Young Gravy. Seriously, when I, I think I was on a trip to Mount Basher to go snowboarding and I was in the car with my friends. I'm like, yo, like, let me get the ox. Like, I want to play something. I turned him on and everyone's like, what the f- is this? Like, who is this? And now yes. all my friends love him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's Hell the yeah. shit. He is. He's tight, yo. He's got the sauce for sure. Dude, yeah, when I heard your song, I was like, yo, this sounds like him. I was like, damn, sick. I appreciate that. I, if, I, if I sound a little bit young, like Young Gravy, then we're do, we <laughs> doing all set. right. You did it. We're you got mountain bikers. Right. You sound like Gravy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever I go to the studio, they always say that I'm like Young or Lil Dicky. <laughs> that too. Yeah. What? Dude. <laughs> Not a bad mix. <laughs> no. That's so funny. Shit. Okay. I'm going to switch gears a little bit, go to into a different question. I okay. want to just ask you about the Space Mob Squad. I'm sure you got a lot of stuff to tell me about it. There's people out there who know exactly who you guys are. There's people out there who've heard of it. They may not know. There's people out there that have no idea. So just give us the inside scoop on all things space mom. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So <laughs> nah, you're good. You're good. Um damn. It's just like it kind of started. Well, I guess it started as the coalition was that we wanted to way back before we had a board called the coalition or anything we wanted to we were like building and and really working on the cable a lot around here and and then i had this idea that we need to we need to we need to make a crew we need to come up with a name and we need to make videos and we came up with the coalition and then we started filming those online series which which got us a lot of hype and really did a lot for the squad um but really the, the and then the space mob kind of just came out of nowhere like i really i know it was like on a winch trip or something cuz we were we were already the coalition and then by that point we had already filmed the coalition the movie and then fuck I really don't know it's like the space mob just like it like it's like we were on a winch trip and something happened and then we were just like yelling that shit we were just like yeah space mob Uh," like and then and then like after we kind of like made that merge from like calling ourselves the coalition and then we had this space mob idea and everyone just kind of like latched on to the name space mob. And it just has, I don't know what it is about it, but it's like, and the public is like that too. Like if you ask someone, people probably only know the coalition because we actually have a board named that. But if you ask them space mob, they're probably gonna be like, Oh yeah, those are the Valdosta boys, you know? Yeah. And it really just, I think, I think Space Mob is so strong because it was like 100% organic and just like, mm-hmm. kind of just like, it birthed itself almost. <laughs> like, it, it was definitely like a wind strip, some sort of conversation. And it was like, I really don't know. I really don't remember. I just remember like, I remember being on a wind strip and all of a sudden we were the Space Mob and we were like, this Thanks. is it. Hell this yeah. is it, you know, and then just started repping it. And, and then the, 
the public really just latched on to it. Everyone just loves Space Mob. Like, I have people hitting me up for stickers that don't even know what we do. And they just, they just <laughs> want the sticker because they like the logo, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that probably helped, too. After, I, after we came up with the name, I drew the logo based off the Space Jam logo. Um, and then it was just, like, up and up and up and up, you know? And now mm-hmm. it's like we have the coalition the movie sequels and then it's presented by space mob so like the coalition and space mob are virtually the same thing but space mob just kind of took off like the name just kind of took off more than anything and then and it's really like all the crew of the space mob is really just all the homies affiliated with us you know me quinn trav cross Dairy, Coty, like then we have a bunch of international people that are just down for it. And I think it's it's really just like a mentality thing. Like if you're just having fun on the water, don't care what people think, you ride for yourself and to be creative and have style and shit. I don't know. It's like <laughs> It's like a dream, really. Like, I don't, it just happened, you know? It, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a thing that we sat down. Like, the coalition was a, a thing that we sat down and created, you know? And we were like, we need a name, blah, blah, blah. Let's figure out a name. And everyone gave suggestions, blah, blah, blah. And then we landed on the coalition. Yeah. And the space mob was just like, we had no plans of making it and it just happened. And I feel like that's why it has so much power is because it wasn't forced. It was like, yeah, it was just created from the energy we had. And like, I think with the whole space thing and aliens and stuff, like that's just, we're like, especially me and Quinn, we're like, we're not conspiracy theorists by any means, but like, we love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we love aliens, the thought of them visiting us, abducting us. And, and, and now it's like, it couldn't have been a better time. Cause like with the government releasing UFO evidence and like all there's like tons of information kind of being released and it's like well damn aliens are real and they are probably here on earth and i think that's also just a it's a very uh fun idea for me to especially put on the graphics and in the videos and it's like an endless it's an endless idea for creativity is space and aliens Mm -hmm. and spaceships and abductions. And it's like, it's, it's just so fun to create like all the merch and the videos and the graphics. It's like, I could do space themed stuff forever. (laughs) Would you, would you want to get abducted if you could? Bro, I, (laughs) I like, I like want to, but it's scary. I watched I watched the Close Encounter of the Fourth Kind, and it was like super gnarly. And I watched it with Cena, and we actually had like nightmares that night, and we couldn't oh, no. sleep. And it was <laughs> scary. I swear, it was so scary. But like after I've watched a lot of abduction theories and videos on people that have got abducted, and that shit is so real. Like it's, it's so real, bro. It really is. And it doesn't seem that bad. Like you just get, you know, they, they usually scoop you up while you're driving or something. And then they just put you back in your car and you don't even remember. (laughs) So yeah, I could probably get abducted as long as I can like take a GoPro with me or something to document it. You gotta have something to film it. Yeah, for sure. I feel like, you know, we'd be homies. That makes sense. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't hurt me. They'd be like, oh, you're with the space mob. You're good. They'd like dab you up right when you got there too. Yeah, (laughs) we have been waiting for you. (laughs) Call you by your first name too. (laughs) Yeah. It'd be so scary though, 100%. Yeah. And 
Quinn, Quinn's actually seen seen uh, a UFO, which was like a very crazy experience. Um, I have not. I've been waiting patiently, and I have not. <laughs> I've, it better be, dude. <laughs> But, They're probably up there. They can probably hear us right now. They're like, oh, he wants to get picked up. <laughs> they can hear us for sure. The government can definitely hear us. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that. Like, <laughs> I don't think I'm interesting enough to be listened to, but maybe. <laughs> it's, a cra- <laughs> it's a crazy world we live in. Yeah, for real. Mm, well, damn. Only, get, you, only getting crazier. Only getting crazier. Only getting crazier. You oh, also yeah. mentioned before I go off on an alien tangent. You also uh-huh. mentioned the coalition movies. So I want to ask you about what it's like traveling and filming for those. Just kind of your take and and what you experienced, good and bad. There's, I mean, anyone that's been winching. There's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad that comes along with it. It's it's never the same experience and but it's all it's all for the clip you know it's like it's a lot of work to get a pull you need you need a crew to be successful at winching you can't winch by yourself you can't winch with two people you can't winch with three people you got to have you got to have at least four to five people to run a successful winch mission and yeah, we we've been putting in a lot of work lately and it's been amazing. We've been we've been crushing spots, getting clips, vibing out the whole time. Um but then but then you have the other side like I know you mentioned like Argentina and I mean Argentina was a nightmare. It was from from the very from from the time we landed, we brought two winches with us. And they got stopped at customs and the entire month we were there, we were trying to get them out of customs and it never happened. And so that whole time we were like running around with, with old winches that we borrow from people and then they'd break or not have enough line. And then Argentina was kind of like, not the best country for winching because the spots that we were hitting, they'd be like, four to five hours apart we'd like wake up at 5 a.m drive five hours to a spot spot wasn't a go like it looked like in pictures or something and then we'd have to drive another four hours to the next spot and it was like it was like that was a long trip but you know all in all we did find some spots and and you know we traveled a lot of miles and i'll never you know it's not like on the, uh, I'd ever give back that experience. It's just an experience. But and it, looking back on it, it was sick. That's like, uh, speaking of that, I have a guest question for you from Quinn. And we're going to play the clip over the video so everyone can see it. All right. Have him ask you the question. So we'll play that right now. What's up, Mr. Jacobson? This is Quinn Silvernail coming at you with the guest question so a lot of people think that we're making wakeboard movies and whatnot and we're just going around all these exotic and cool places and traveling and filming they don't really get that behind the scenes um since we're working on our third movie right now i thought maybe we could take it back to the last movie and maybe you could give us some insight on the argentina trip which is pretty infamous amongst our our squad, but I don't know how much everybody else knows about that trip. So maybe let's go with a couple of your favorite moments from the Argentina trip and a couple of least favorite moments of the Argentina trip. And uh, yeah, oh, you left your glasses in my car, so I'll give them back to you. Favorite favorite moment was definitely being able to shred at Epiquin, the the like sunken city Lago de Epiquin. 
And that was actually like the same spot that Danny McCaskill made a biking video with Red Bull. And we were shredding some of the same features that he was shredding in that video. The water was just up a little bit more. And we actually like, we met the old man that was the last person that lived like in the flooded city like he lived oh, he, he couldn't live in the, he's like the last person there <laughs> like the last like it flooded everyone left and this dude still lives in a hut like right down the street from this flooded city what? with his dog and he would come and sit and like read a newspaper and watch us ride and like and that was like that was unbelievable you know like and it was the same dude that gave the interview in the Danny McCaskill Red Bull video and then he's just still there when we get there and he's fucking walking his dog coming down and just why he just sit there and watch us shred all day and like that was insane you know <laughs> like I just got goosebumps talking about it because that like that's just incredible you know and yeah and, you know it, you'll never get to do something like that mm -mm. Yeah. I don't even know if he's still around dude he was old like how old he was old. <laughs> he was an old boy for sure, dude. But he was sick, and, and we had we had Spanish speaking people with us, and we'd like talk to him and stuff, and it was just such a cool experience. And just to just to see that sunken city is is something in itself, you know. But we actually, damn, I can't remember how we got in contact with this person, but. We actually got the key to it. Like, there's a the gate. Key to the city? We got the key to the city. There's a there's a gate, and you can't go in. And we like went. Oh, fuck, I don't remember how we got this girl's <laughs> phone number, but we like contacted her and told her what we wanted to do and that we totally respect it and this and that. And we met up with her and she gave us the key to Epic Quinn. So every morning we'd unlock the gate, drive our trucks all the way down to where the water was and then lock the gate. And it was just us in there and fully wow. had permission to just shred this sunken city. And like, that was, I mean, that's just hype, you know? Yeah, it's that's so cool. Crazy. <laughs> I oh know that. It actually is crazy. Damn, that's wild. So that was right? your favorite part. What was the? What was the, not to like be negative, but what was like? Was it the winches getting stuck at customs? Was that like this sucks? Like we're gonna use this other one now or what? I'll tell you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. There's so much shit that went down. Like, I mean, I've never seen so many bros crying in my life. Like, we were, at times, we were all so broken down that we were, like, yelling at each other, crying, pissed. Like, I, I think the, the, the worst day for me that I remember was we were at Renton, the cable park, because we spent two weeks at this cable park, while, our first two weeks while we were trying to get the winches out of customs. And we were on the phone every day and trying everything we could. And these were brand new winches, brand new, two brand new winches to be on this trip. And it was like, if we had those winches, everything would have been completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, shit would have been butter, dude. We would have had our brand new winches, and we just would have been winching the whole time. And I remember this day because 
we were at Renton and we we're just on the phone and it was like it was hell up to this point complete hell of just like this whole trip is is bunk like if we don't have our winches we can't winch without winches you know what I mean <laughs> yeah and we and we spent all this money and all the homies are here and slingshot was behind it so we had kind of had that added pressure of like well slingshots throwing in money for this they bought a couple of our flights out there and it's like we have to get clips you know mm -hmm. and we were at Renton and then we like just got news of like the winches are like they're fucked they're seized like you're not getting your winches like that's that's what we were told and I remember and I remember standing there we got that news and I my eyes just started filling and like I was like and I had to like walk away and I just started bawling like and like I'm really like not a big crier like it takes me a lot to like shed a tear and I was just bawling bro like I didn't even I didn't even know where it came from I just couldn't like I feel like after like all the two weeks of just stressing these winches and like, this is everything. If we don't have these winches, we're fucked. If we have them, we're good. And then we got that word that they were like, nope, you're dead. Like you're not, you're never getting your winches out of customs. And I was just, and I just like broke down, bro. Damn. And, I'll just, and I'll just never forget that. Cause like I can, I can pretty much remember every time I've cried. Cause unfortunately it's not that much. And <laughs> And that was definitely one of those times that it was just like too much to handle. And then, but then after that, you know, we, we just picked up the pieces and we realized that our winches were seized and we we're not getting our brand new winches. So we were like, all right, fuck it. We're still here. Who's got a winch. And then we just started reaching out to people and trying to find old winches and stuff. And, and then we just, picked up the pieces and moved on we had these old battered winches and we had to work on them every day to keep them running and stuff but we did it and oh, yeah. got and we still got clips you know so so all was not lost but in that moment it was like it was like all was lost i i, I didn't want to be there anymore i was like this is we're we're dead you know we don't have, yeah. we, we can't can't winch without winches yeah. but persistence baby yeah, and then you ended up with the key to the city. Like, and then we ended up with the key to the city. Yeah, <laughs> never, never give up. You know, never give up. Dang, that's awesome. Pretty that's crazy. crazy. Roller and coaster of emotions. Sounds like for sure. <laughs> and going also, what also one of the best moments I had was going to Patagonia, because like. Uh, oh, yeah. Our friend, our friend Pancho at the time had a, uh, a house in Bariloche in Patagonia. And you always hear about Patagonia. I mean, mm -hmm. if you live on this earth, you know of Patagonia. And, and it's just really just a magical place. And, and it was like after we had kind of gotten, we just weren't getting the spots we wanted to and this and that. I was like, yo, we need to go chill for a day or two. And we made... And we made the push to Patagonia, to Poncho's house, so we could just go chill. And that was amazing. Just to, just to see Patagonia and in all of its beauty and to just kind of chill for a few days yeah. and reset. And, like, that, I'm glad we did that. Cause, Hell, yeah. Because I don't know Wait. when I'm going back to Patagonia. Yeah, right? Do you <laughs> so ever, was, whenever you, there. like, travel, like, internationally, like, do you kind of have moments of, like, oh, like, I don't want to go back or I don't know when I'm going to be here again. Like, do you get pretty sad when you have to leave places? Mm, not too much really. Cause, mm -hmm. cause I want to travel. And yeah. so if a place is dope, then I know I'm going to come back. Go back. Nice. And nice. so, you know what I mean? Cause I totally, yeah, I want to keep traveling and that's why I'm, kind of bummed i mean the whole world is bummed right now but like all this covid stuff it's just so hard mm -hmm. to travel and i have a german girlfriend so travel is kind of important right now yeah um so it's kind of a bummer because I'm, I'm trying to go to germany in april and i don't really know how that's gonna go right now so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Damn. It's kind of hard, but we'll figure it out. I'll find Hopefully a way you get in. there. Yeah. Oh, I'll no. find a way in for sure. <laughs> I'll forge some paperwork or something. That's what we did last time. No problem. Oh, yeah. Maybe the aliens will pick you up and drop you back down there. That'd be hot. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> They're going to help you out for sure. I can tell. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, we are uh, approaching the end of all my questions for the interview. So I just want to say thank you very much for sharing with yeah. not only me, but anybody who's going to watch this, your story and, you know, what yeah, you do in your life and everything it's it's been awesome hearing about it you are a dope ass guy let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> thank you man just trying to keep it all going you know it's like i just want new experiences and just to keep creating and i'm just blessed that people have kind of you know they they dig my creation so let's keep creating keep it rolling we love keep to hear it rolling it. Heck yeah. yeah. Do you have any uh I'm so, do you have any shout outs you want to give before I close down the video? Yeah, for sure. Let me I mean we can we can always shout out Slingshot Wake for building the best wakeboards on the planet and allowing me to put my artwork on them. Um I'm gonna shout out Steve's life because they have been down since day one and they're such a dope small homey clothing brand and they actually helped me produce a lot of the space mob stuff so bless up to them bless up to Derek at Biwake. he's always helping us kind of figure out how to make some of these trips happen and with connections and stuff like that and shout out let's see shout out Valdos the weight compound for making my dreams come true um Shout out Protect for believing in me. And shout out The Coalition, the movie, the trilogy. It will be dropping hmm, August. -ish okay. Okay. We're looking forward year. to it, it. It's dropping this year and it's gonna be it's gonna be worth the wait for sure. Heck and yeah. yeah, shout out to, you know, all the homies that support me and that dig the style and shout out everyone who supports wakeboarding because I truly believe that wakeboarding is such a dope sport with so much style and energy and it should be right up there with skateboarding and snowboarding yeah. and it's really up to us to keep pushing it and show the world what we can do. For sure. Well, okay, Wesley Mark Jacobson, the most interesting <laughs> man in wakeboarding. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Out. All right, let's go. Later. Bye. Bangers on my forehead, butter on my biscuit. Meet me in the meadow and I get you in a minute. Tattoos on my kneecaps and my shorts is right above that. Gucci, Gucci, fuck that. No designer, I don't touch that. Bangers on my forehead, butter on my biscuit. Meet me in the meadow.